uh, to be here. It's, uh, thank you, the organizers, for inviting me to speak. Uh, it's my first time at uh, APC, and uh, so I'd like to see the, the new center growing and uh, being very successful scientifically. So today I'm going to give an overview of uh, some work uh, I've done and others done on the Lorentz violation uh, and uh, with the uh, uh, sort of uh, heavy emphasis on one interesting problem that I, I find, and that's uh, a problem of how you can have Lorentz violation coming from the very short distances and somehow the quantum loops uh, should, you know, uh, uh, transmit that into a, a, a huge Lorentz violation uh, encoded in, uh, uh, say, deviations of speed of light and so on. Uh, uh, but it, in fact, we know it doesn't happen because Lorentz symmetry is, uh, is a good symmetry. And uh, so I'm going to, to, to speak mostly on, on the subject of uh, how it's done uh, or what are the mechanisms that could uh, prevent this from happening. But uh, I would probably start with uh, uh, introducing the effective field theory description of Lorentz violation in particle physics and uh, possibly also uh, talk about a little bit of uh, how we tested it enough. Uh, and then uh, I'll uh, mention my recent work on the application of, uh, 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 well, uh, on the problem of Lorentz violation in uh, an interesting gravity model that surfaced uh, not that long ago. Uh, uh, it goes under the name of Harald and Lifshitz. And uh, I had some opera comments uh, that I typed in uh, some uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, uh, just before another meeting. And then, of course, um, uh, well, I actually wrote a, a small paper along the lines of uh, uh, Philip Bruck's idea, uh, similar to that, uh, who's here. And um, I, I sent it to my collaborators uh, uh, to, to sort of look at it. And in the end, I got all this. Uh, uh, Links to the to the to the blogs and uh, to whatnot with with various uh, uh, statements about uh, wh wh what's what's happening and uh, it, of course you can't be too careful with loose cables right and, uh, uh, and <laughs> you, I I'm very happy to see that this place in particular takes it very seriously so when when I was uh, passing by the building there was a huge hole dug out by by the side of it with. <laughs> with lots of cables exposed, so hopefully uh, everything will be uh, just in order here. Anyways, um, um, so uh, I'm going to uh, uh, start uh, talking uh, now as to, uh, uh, well, uh, the, the two questions I'd like to address. Uh, is uh, Lorentz violation uh, useful for anything? Uh, so why do we need it? We need to, to, to sort of, uh, bother ourselves with these ideas. And uh, given the uh, uh, utmost strength of the constraints on Lorentz violation uh, in the stair model sector, is it possible to keep Lorentz violation uh, isolated to gravitational sector or to more generically to high dimensional operators? If, if that's not possible, uh, that, that is probably uh, uh, going to be a uh, well, it's uh, for me the the the, the problem lose, uh, loses loses uh, some interest. Anyways, um, there there are various other interesting issues that I'm not going to t uh, touch today, and uh, um, uh, I, I listed some of them here. I, I I'd like to stress here that uh, I, I, in parallel to what I'm going to be talking, like uh, effective field theory approach to uh, uh, Lorentz violation, where you have uh, uh, certain uh, non-trivial vector fields or the gradients of the scalar fields or, or tensor fields condensing uh, and uh, thereby you have a, a, a preferred frame. Uh, there, there are also uh, uh, competing ideas. Uh, I'd say the, the, the more, uh, uh, the, the, the probably uh, uh, less people worked on them yet and so they're not as, as developed. Uh, uh, where, where you try to somehow modify Lorentz invariance without breaking it. I don't quite understand the subject and I uh, would be happy to learn about it from the uh, participants of the workshop. All right, so uh, at first glance, uh, 
if you uh, start with uh, quantum electrodynamics that we all know and love, you can uh, introduce, uh, and let's say we work in a flat space over a mu nu uh, background. We just uh, slap on top of it various uh, uh, constant vectors, tensors, and so on, and list everything possible uh, at the lowest dimension operator going up and up. So um, that's... Uh, uh, being a very useful uh, sort of uh, uh, bookkeeping approach in, the, in particle physics, and that's uh, being uh, uh, developed uh, uh, at length by uh, uh, Alan Kastelecki and his, uh, his collaborators in Indiana, and that's uh, uh, the approach that sometimes people call uh, uh, standard model extensions, uh, which uh, is not a very good name, I don't think. But anyhow, this is... Uh, uh, this is the approach where, where you list all possible operators. Uh, uh, you don't ask where this, this uh, in external tensors come in uh, from, from uh, um, uh, some fundamental principles. You, it, uh, and you just, uh, you just study what, what they give uh, in uh, various experiments. And uh, the usefulness of this approach is that you, at least you can give a figure of merit for different experiments because you can, once the theory is formulated at the level of the Lagrangian, you can uh, calculate various, uh, various uh, physical effects from it. Um, so um, um, there, there is one problem, though, is that uh, w there, there are some speculations, or you, you tend to think that maybe if uh, 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 somehow the uh, Lorentz violation could be associated with, with uh, uh, some uh, physics that we don't understand yet, maybe, maybe uh, uh, very naively, quantum gravity and such. And uh, in that case, it might be coming from very short distance uh, physics scales, yet this, uh, this uh, operators uh, that uh, you have here are coming up uh, with, with uh, dimension three. That means that the A and B and, and so, so on coefficients have, here have the dimensionality of energy. So if they come from a very short distance scale, they, they can very well be proportional to the huge uh, energy factor in the, in the numerator, and that, that would just invalidate the whole theory because we know that this coefficient, k mu in particular, is uh, not larger than the Hubble uh, 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 expansion rate today, and so it's 10 to minus uh, 33 electron volts and not 10 to the 19 GeV. So that's, that's the essence. Uh, 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 why do you cannot just simply say, oh, all this comes from the, the, the short distance physics, so there is, uh, there is an issue here. Uh, you can say, well, somehow these uh, operators are absent, and I go to the higher dimensional operators that are indeed suppressed by, the, by maybe some, uh, some very large scale, and I put here and Planck just just uh, because I like that scale. I mean, this is a, uh, can be any high energy scale here. And then at, at, uh, at the uh, level of operators, uh, uh, we uh, listed uh, with, with uh, Rob Myers uh, some years ago uh, what, what you can have in uh, quantum electrodynamics. And they, interestingly enough, all these operators lead to the modification of the uh, propagation speed for, for species that, that go, grows with energy. Uh, but uh, interestingly enough, uh, even performing this uh, little exercise, you can find out that uh, within this approach, uh, e cube modification of the dispersion relation doesn't exist for the real scalar because that, that is uh, identical to a total derivative and, and so on. And for the photons, uh, this gives uh, uh, not just uh, uh, a modif modified propagation speed for, for both uh, uh, chiralities, it actually gives a uh, uh, propagation speed different from the uh, left and right-handed polari uh, 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 polarized photons, and uh, therefore it leads to the cosmological birefringence. Bi so it's, uh, even at the level of listing operators, it's a, it's a useful exercise. Now, um, the, uh, we haven't solved the problem yet because uh, we, uh, in the uh, interacting theories, say in this phi is charged on the, on the uh, electromagnetic group, you can start putting uh, quantum loops in, into, this, uh, uh, into this game and you will see uh, right away that uh, they tend to induce uh, uh, operators in, in that list. And the, the, the 
uh, size of these operators will be proportional to the uh, square of your uh, ultraviolet cutoff or be sensitive again to the uh, short distance physics. So, it, it, so the problem remains in this approach and uh, the question is where and how it can be cured. So uh, before, before I go to, the, to this um, question of um, how it can be cured, uh, uh, I, I would like to s say a few words. Is, uh, is like Lorentz violation good for anything? Why, why bother? Why, why should we uh, spend time on that? And uh, I uh, loosely uh, listed here uh, as, as a number of interesting topics. And uh, for me, uh, the, the first uh, I, uh, I was drawn to this uh, when uh, the discovery of dark energy came, came aboard, and in particular, uh, there were uh, speculations that maybe it's, uh, it's not a constant, maybe it's a rolling field uh, somehow on the cosmological scales that does that. And if you, if you have uh, um, um, the, the field that changes in time, it actually creates uh, uh, um, a non preferred frame, non-invariant uh, Lorentz background that could be uh, searched for I mean, the coupling of this background to, to normal uh, fields uh, out of the ceremonial could be, could be searched for. Uh, in experiment, and that's uh, uh, been expressed in uh, 98 by Carroll and, uh, and others. So uh, in another interesting uh, um, application of what you can call possibly Lorentz violation is the uh, varying speed of light cosmology, which I uh, know very little about, but uh, again, very, would be very happy to learn today. And uh, there, there's been some interesting uh, developments in dark matter phenomenology where you say, well, uh, well, here the, the rule of the game goes like, I don't like dark, uh, a certain group of people say, I don't like dark matter, I'm going to substitute it with something, modifying the gravity interactions and so on. And uh, once you go beyond the most naive versions of uh, oh, let's modify the, the Newton F equals to MA, uh, then, then you arrive to, to various models where the, the, con the condensates of the vector field uh, play, play a certain role or, or, or and they, in, to a certain degree, the dark fields uh, substitute the dark matter in this case. And uh, it, it's been uh, uh, every model that I've seen in another uh, aspect uh, requires uh, some sort of uh, vector field condensation. And that, in that way, way, it's also, in some sense, uh, a Lorentz violating theory. Now, uh, there is an old idea, I'm going to mention it uh, more, uh, baryogenesis from CPT uh, breaking, and the CPT breaking in the approach I just showed implies the violation of Lorentz invariance, and that goes all the way back to uh, Zoldovich and Kuzmin, and maybe some other people, I don't know. Uh, so uh, for me, actually, the most interesting part now happens with, uh, with the high energy gravity theory, because I, th I think to, to a certain extent, this could be viewed, uh, the, the proposal of Harava uh, uh, could be viewed as, as the uh, sort of a candidate theory for, for, for uh, quantum gravity, for a theory that, that actually uh, be well behaved in the ultraviolet. And uh, uh, that, that, that theory is 100% Lorentz violating in the gravity sector. And uh, the most pressing issue uh, uh, with respect to what I'm uh, talking about, uh, is there a mechanism that would prevent uh, spreading this uh, one, uh, one uh, uh, large effect into the uh, stereo model sector? And then finally, uh, for me personally, it's interesting that uh, this, these issues are interesting because uh, uh, in, uh, at the dimension five level, you have sensitivity to Lorentz violation much stronger than one over M Planck. Uh, so I, I challenge you to put anything you like in Lagrangian um, microscopic physics with a coefficient smaller than 1 over M Planck. Any operator you like, uh, slab it on top of your Lagrangian and you will find out that, oh, none of the physics that I do is actually sensitive to that tiny effect, except that if you uh, violate Lorentz invariance, then, then, then you, you can actually say, well, that, that never happens at that level of precision. There, there are some other notable exceptions uh, with, with baryon number violation, uh, but let's not go into that. But uh, the, the number of this is uh, 
less than the number of fingers on, on, on one hand. So it's very, very exceptional sensitivity to, to very, very high scales. And that's, that's I find, interesting. All right, so just a, a few words uh, that the idea of uh, 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 CPD odd baryogenesis was, uh, was actually uh, developed in parallel with, with regular baryogenesis. Uh, you know very well that uh, 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 there are three conditions that could uh, lead to the dynamical generation of uh, baryon uh, number out of uh, initially baryosymmetric universe. And the, uh, number two here requires C and CP violation and, uh, uh, and the departure from thermal equilibrium. Uh, if you, uh, number two and three could be actually compactified. Uh, in theory, if you have a CPT violation, you can have a baryon number developed in equilibrium. And that uh, uh, is actually a nice way of, uh, of thinking about CPT violation. It's a combination of uh, CP violation and uh, uh, departure from thermal equilibrium. Uh, so that, that idea has been worked on. Uh, uh, by, by various uh, people, and I just, uh, 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 well, if, say if you have uh, top quark uh, mass, or dispersion relation rather, I shouldn't be talking about mass, uh, different from anti-top quark, and then uh, uh, that would create a certain chemical potential for, for, for particles relative to anti-particles, and uh, uh, as, uh, the electroweak processes that uh, convert one type of uh, particles into antiparticles freeze out. You can uh, have a non-zero uh, non uh, uh, net effect on the baryon number. And uh, you can see that uh, this uh, delta M CPT uh, should be in quotation marks, uh, can be as, uh, as small as 10 to the minus 8. Uh, and uh, generate observable baryon asymmetry at uh, 10 minus 2, uh, 10 level uh, of uh, uh, number of baryons relative to entropy. So this is uh, uh, nice. However, we know that uh, the Lorentz violation and CPT is not broken at a much, much better level than 10 to minus 8, uh, typically. So um, how to uh, get around that? And uh, uh, so what uh, we did, uh, uh, with uh, uh, my uh, student uh, some years ago, uh, we played with the high dimensional operators that I just showed you with, that give a dispersion relation for energy and uh, put it, uh, uh, funny as my sound, in the neutrino sector and uh, in, in the lepton uh, sector. And then combining it with the concept of uh, leptogenesis, you can, you can actually have a very successful, very easy uh, generation of the uh, lepton number. Uh, uh, which is uh, then, of course, transferred to baryons by the Svalaran processes. Of course, you should uh, at this point say, well, do I need CPT violation? I can have a very successful leptogenesis to begin with, and you'd be totally right. Anyways, um, um, this, uh, you can, you can uh, have uh, Lorentz violation out of the high dimensional operator here and generate uh, uh, observable baryon number with uh, uh, operators that are normalized on uh, uh, 10 to the 23 uh, GV, and that is on the very, very uh, tiny uh, operators, but uh, uh, because of the, uh, the, gr uh, the they're high dimensional, they grow in the ultraviolet and they give a large effect. So, uh, well, but even 10 to the 23 uh, suppression is actually uh, pretty much uh, challenged by the today's uh, constraints on Lorentz violation that can be derived from various different sources. And, but but uh, um, uh, I, sh I should say there are, some, there are some loopholes in these constraints, and uh, but this probably uh, will be uh, too technical to, to go into them. But, uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to discuss it uh, later. Uh, very well. So, um, have we tested Lorentz violation enough? That's probably at the, at the end of my introduction section. Uh, I'll just say, uh, in my, in, strictly in my opinion, that uh, uh, the experimental tests of Lorentz violation with expensive instruments such as Fermi and so on. Uh, 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 
I know that uh, people over here probably work on uh, integral uh, SPI constraints. Uh, that those those tests are of course uh, justified, but uh, they, they 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 should be coming on, on the shoulders of uh, more established and uh, better motivated physics uh, physics uh, program for which these instruments were uh, designed in the first place. So uh, Opera was is not an ex a, a, a exception either. So it was designed for for different purposes. However, uh, there are some. Uh, uh, I have some craft, uh, crafty friends, experimentalists, who can uh, uh, create, uh, uh, you know, uh, tabletop experiments with, with, with the, you know, not uh, hundreds of millions of dollars pour, 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 poured in, but with, with, with relatively uh, modest budget. And then, uh, of course, you can have uh, or should have a dedicated tests of Lorentz violation with, with, with those, those experiments. So uh, this point of view may of course change if uh, indeed uh, one day uh, some experiment like opera discovers that there is a large violation of Lorentz uh, invariance that doesn't go away then of course it will generate uh, even you know uh, uh, large scale experiments that, that would look for that for confirmation or, or, or rebuttal anyways so let's uh, let's go to this uh, question of uh, dimensional transmutation problem this is is what, uh, what I mentioned. So if you have uh, uh, some operator that uh, N specifies a preferred frame, say, uh, and it, uh, uh, this is the, uh, one of the operator in, uh, in uh, the set that I suggested with, uh, with Myers, and it would uh, actually, due to the quantum correction and the insertion of, uh, say, Lorentz violation, uh, and the photon line would flow into the violation of Lorentz invariance for electrons and the, the answer, answer is basically the whatever you, you coefficient you had it here uh, times uh, some pi's loop factor but then of course it's going to be uh, growing as the UV scale squared so so you have uh, a, a huge naturalness uh, uh, problem on, on your hand with uh, with uh, uh, sensitive quadratic sensitivity to the cutoff so this uh, this whole th uh, theory will break apart uh, 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 v very easily. So, if you have, uh, say, another example of uh, Lorentz violating theory is non commutative QED. If you calculate at two loops, you get uh, quadratic sensitivity to the kind of. Uh, uh, now, um, how to how to protect well from this? This is uh, this is uh, uh, may may sound technical, but it's uh, it's uh, really I think at the heart of the problem. So I, I know of several ways of uh, protecting uh, against it. Uh, so uh, uh, now uh, um, i list some of them. So you can have backgrounds that uh, are somewhat more complicated just, just, than just one vector preferred frame that, that simply do not couple to the, to the uh, operators from lower dimension. And that would be the uh, basically uh, protection by twist, I would call it. And then uh, uh, supersymmetry may, uh, uh, or some symmetry, may automatically push uh, Lorentz violation to uh, uh, high, higher scales, and that's um, um, uh, an interesting suggestion. Then uh, um, the, uh, uh, and that, that's what's relevant for Harawa gravity. Uh, you can have Lorentz violating terms uh, uh, in uh, uh, in the relevantly coupled sector, that is, say, gravity, its uh, its interaction with the standard model is suppressed by one over m Planck scale, and you can have a, a large violation there. But if your if your loops are convergent at the same scale where where you break Lorentz invariance, and if you make the large scale separation, that you might be still okay. And uh, that's that's the three uh, solutions that I'm going to review now. Um, so protection by twists. So this uh, this goes uh, um, um, basically uh, uh, this the, this operator that uh, uh, I showed you the um, uh, uh, f of dual and one derivative operator. It's it's uh, uh, um, convoluted with uh, more generically non 
it's the uh, product of uh, of uh, of uh, three uh, vectors, but with the, with the tensor of uh, of rank three. So if you uh, break it up into uh, irreducible tensors, uh, you can have a vector and uh, uh, traceless uh, spin th uh, spin three field. So uh, it turns out that it's only vector has this this uh, this problem of uh, dimensional transmutation and uh, naturalness, whereas the uh, the the uh, uh, irreducible part doesn't, and that's uh, simple to understand because uh, this irreducible part simply do cannot couple to lower dimensional operators. Therefore, you can have this part coming from the short distance and being protected, not transmuted very efficiently to high dimensional, uh, to, low, to low dimensions. So you can uh, actually, uh, well, you can, uh, push it a little further and say, well, what if I iterate this, uh, this uh, uh, interaction? And uh, uh, in that case, you will find out that uh, even this uh, protection by twist doesn't quite work, and you would have to cut the loops uh, somewhat lower than, than, than the Planck scale. And that's uh, um, sort of uh, uh, some indication that uh, you would still need uh, um, a, a large separation of scale in this model. Now, uh, protection by symmetries. So suppose you have, uh, in, indeed, Lorentz violation coming into your theory with uh, one over uh, Planck coefficients, and you say you want not to transmit, uh, dimensionally transmute it into large uh, A and B parameters that I was talking about. In that case, uh, you can have uh, uh, well, you, you could engineer such, such, such operators that will not be automatically converted into large dimension three operators. And uh, in this particular case uh, uh, here, uh, you can have an operator that is uh, protected by the lepton number and that does not automatically uh, transmute to the um, lower dimensional operator because uh, uh, you cannot write uh, a, a Lorentz violating operator out of uh, uh, that uh, that also breaks uh, uh, a lepton number uh, at, at dimension three level uh, that would also break the lepton number by two units. So um, uh, this uh, issue was uh, with the Lorentz violation in neutrino sector, I should say. Uh, were discussed first in 2001, uh, completely unrelated with, to OPERA, but uh, related to some uh, suggestions that uh, CPT could be broken in the neutrino sector 100%. Um, the, the, the better, much better example I, I, uh, is the protection by supersymmetry. Suppose your uh, Lorentz violation uh, <coughs> comes together with supersymmetry. That, that may, may, may sound strange. Uh, let, let, let me explain what, what I mean here. So I assume that uh, uh, ex uh, exact supersymmetry like uh, you would, uh, uh, I don't know, so, uh, and the standard supersymmetry, like you, know, like you uh, forget about Lorentz violation, take the standard model, supersymmetrize it, uh, get uh, the beloved M MSSM and uh, uh, insist on standard gauge invariance, uh, have MSSM field content, and then slap on top of this uh, all uh, higher dimension, uh, sorry, uh, Lorentz violating spurions uh, that I showed uh, uh, you earlier. And then the statement goes that uh, uh, whatever you uh, construct out of uh, uh, the theory, uh, uh, you, uh, out, out of theory that, that obeys that will be automatically banished to the dimension five level. And that's, uh, you can uh, call it then uh, that uh, Lorentz symmetry would be uh, uh, in, in some sense an accidental symmetry uh, in, that, in that framework. But that's, uh, that's uh, uh, a good thing because if you can push it to dimension five and high level, then, then you have a certain degree of protection that uh, is regulated by the soft breaking scale. And uh, we did uh, some work along these lines. We, we've, uh, we uh, uh, classified various uh, operators in, uh, in the supersymmetric theory and showed that indeed uh, their evolution uh, 
is, uh, sorry, <laughs> I have lots of technical slides that I probably shouldn't be doing, uh, that uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the final answer is actually uh, proportional. Uh, you, you do induce uh, uh, lower dimensional operators, but always with, uh, with the uh, uh, scale uh, suggested by the soft breaking scale uh, squared, which is, uh, which is uh, presumably a TV scale squared. And so your, your uh, Lorentz violation goes as a TV scale squared over M plane. Um, all right, so I'll, uh, I'll skip these comments uh, because uh, I, I, I should say that this uh, construction that we, we did uh, is, not, is, not, uh, is not unique. Uh, you can have uh, other realizations of uh, uh, supersymmetry and Lorentz violation. One in particular is uh, uh, supersymmetric non-commutative field theories where uh, uh, and gauge theories in particular where often uh, you have uh, the uh, SUSY uh, transfer, uh, sorry, gauge transformations and uh, uh, Lorentz violating parameters entangled together and that, that would be a, a slightly uh, uh, different from what I, what I uh, uh, d uh, just discussed, but uh, but the outcome is the same. That the, the Lorentz violation is actually banished to, to the dimension five and six operators, and its transmutation to a, a lower dimensional operators is controlled by uh, M Planck. Uh, sorry, by M uh, uh, soft soft breaking scale. Um, all right. So I option three that uh, uh, I'm kind of. Uh, well, uh, uh, very, very interested. It, 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 suppose, suppose you have a stair model sector coupled to some other sector. Doesn't doesn't matter what. Uh, it could be axions, gravity, and so on. But uh, through the uh, uh, what's what one would call uh, 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 irrelevant operators, or the, the the interaction that is one over big M suppressed. And uh, let's say we break. Uh, Lorentz violation, uh, sorry, Lorentz symmetry in one sector, and we, we want to study how it actually penetrates into the STEM model. Uh, but again, of course, we, uh, we should uh, be uh, employing our uh, apparatus of field theory and study it not just at the, at the, at the tree level, but at, at the loop level. And uh, 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 you, you would uh, naively expect that if you put this in the loop, you will get the UV squared uh, sensitivity divided by, uh, by uh, M squared and the operator of dimension four from the STAIR model. Uh, so that, that could be a very, very large correction because this is like a, effectively a correction to the speed of light. So if your UV scale and uh, scale M uh, are the same, uh, you may as well uh, uh, find out that you have uh, violations or non-universality in the speed of light possibly at, at the percent level. So uh, naive uh, sort of power counting goes against you. However, so recently there has been uh, proposed a theory um, that um, uh, um, um, well, uh, recently Arjav so recently, a few years ago, Harjao proposed the theory that uh, 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 sort of uh, breaks Lorentz invariance in the gravity sector 100%. Yet uh, the theory is very nice because uh, you go from uh, this type of propagator in the ultraviolet to this type of propagator. And then uh, you don't introduce new uh, uh, dangerous ghost-like poles and you have uh, additionally a convergence of all your loop integrals at some uh, Java uh, Lipschitz scale. And uh, uh, this uh, theory has been worked on by uh, uh, a large number of people, and in particular, uh, Diego has uh, uh, improved the theory quite a bit to the healthy stage. And uh, so uh, 
I like it a lot because what I, what I was doing just before, I was inserting simply what, what, uh, 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 Lorentz violating operator in one, one loop and seeing, well, well, is the result small, large? Well, here you don't have to do that because the theory is, uh, because of this behavior, it sort of self-regulates in some sense. So you don't, you don't have to cut these integrals uh, or if you, if you cut, there's only logarithmic integrals. So you have a much, uh, better computational kind of means. Uh, and that's uh, uh, the fact that the loops can be divergent at a harava lipschitz scale, and we can make this harava lipschitz scale much lower than the Planck scale is, uh, uh, I find it, uh, let's put it, intriguing. So here's, uh, here's my picture. It's, uh, it's not, uh, well, it's not my Scottish heritage or anything, but uh, this, is, this is just a picture of uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, say, uh, two, two type of lattices, if you like. So that's, that's how I would prefer to think about it. Suppose you have a very finely, five, uh, finely grained lattice on which the standard model lives, and it's sort of, uh, uh, if, if you switch off gravity, it actually, uh, fully Lorentz symmetric and well behaved and so on. And then you have uh, gravity living on, uh, and the size of this uh, uh, um, um, uh, square is, uh, is uh, L Planck, the Planck less, or one over M Planck if you want the mass scale. And then the gravity lives on, on a much uh, uh, sort of coarser lattice, if you like, and the size of that thing is one over lambda Java lift sheets. And then uh, uh, the, the good thing is that all the gravitational uh, loops, they, they, they saturated this uh, Java lift sheet scale. And their interaction with the Stair model is, of course, suppressed by G Newton. So we, uh, we have, uh, uh, with, the, with the perimeter postdoc, Yang Min Shang, we, we address this uh, with issue uh, in the uh, very, uh, uh, oh, I suppose we use healthy extension of the Harjava Lifshitz, and we calculated one loop corrections to a representative uh, 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 matter field, uh, which we took a uh, uh, scalar, uh, scalar field. Uh, we, we took scalar QED, and we calculated corrections uh, uh, stemming from the gravity sector to the uh, photon propagation and to the uh, scalar propagation. And uh, what we found that uh, some, some corrections indeed uh, uh, receive this, uh, in particular from tra uh, uh, transverse tra traceless gravitons indeed receive this uh, harava lipschitz scale squared. And it's uh, normalized on uh, G Newton, so it's one over M Planck squared. So this thing can be made small. But there were also corrections that, uh, that are, uh, are coming from the sectors of uh, harava th theory that is identical to GR and they have quadratic sensitivity. Uh, to the to the to the uh, cutoff, and that's that's not good. However, we also found the modification of uh, Harava gravity action uh, by adding some additional uh, interactions that uh, that would banish even even this uh, uh, this uh, dangerously growing terms, and uh, everything uh, uh, would be governed by just this product G Newton times lambda Harava Lifshitz, and so you would. Uh, Want to put uh, lambda Harava Lifshitz much lower than the Planck scale, and then you could be possibly okay with the, with the order one modifications of uh, Lorentz invariance for gravitons. There is one problem remains though, and that is um, um, in this theory there is no um, direct uh, sort of. Um, argument why the speed of light for matter species and for gravitons uh, should be the same. And uh, one would need to invoke uh, other principles, for example, supersymmetry, that would make that, that uh, the two speeds of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, light, uh, this two, two speed of prob uh, limiting speed of propagation the same. Um, you, you can also, 
have, a, how to make this theory no, no, uh, supersymmetric, you can introduce just a standard model supersymmetry and not try to supersymmetrize the nonlinear Harava Lifshitz terms. Uh, uh, they, they would break supersymmetry, but again, the breaking will be trans, uh, uh, regulated and the breaking will be regulated by the Harava Lifshitz scale squared. So you could have uh, the uh, sort of uh, um, um, a nice theory where the, even the soft breaking scale is, is, is regulated by the same combination. This, this, this idea has been expressed also by Pedro Harjava. All right, so I have uh, some uh, remaining uh, uh, slides and I wanted to, to uh, well, when I was, uh, looked like a good idea at the time. So, uh, uh, thank you. I uh, put some slides on, on Opera experiment. We, we, when, when such a big thing uh, like Opera uh, uh, initial announcement comes uh, um, uh, on board, you, you cannot just simply ignore it. Uh, well, you, you may, of course, but, uh, but uh, uh, a good theorists should not, uh, you know, uh, let the, the, the good experimental anomaly go unnoticed. And uh, of course, everyone noticed that this, this, this report with, which was uh, uh, six sigma significance for and the, the propagation speed in matter much larger than uh, uh, well, much larger, a little bit larger than, but uh, this a little bit uh, you should compare with the sensitivity to, to delta C at the level of 10 minus 20 in the, in the QED sector. So, so that, that is a huge, a huge effect. So, uh, well, I, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, this is a joke that I had. Like, uh, why, why am I talking about it? Uh, this is, First half of the week, I, I we spent talking about uh, uh, another problem uh, say, uh, related to <laughs> lithium deficiency in cosmology, and that's also uh, one of the dangerous uh, physical conditions that needs to be treated. And that's that's why I'm talking about Opera. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, so I uh, been in this business long enough, and I waited. Uh, you know, for for the noise to uh, settle down, because I, I actually thought that I have something nice to say. And once I wrote down the paper and said it to my collaborators, uh, the, the, in the end, uh, the, the response I got that, you know, have you seen that? And <laughs> that's that's the the uh, the uh, uh, the. Um, Unfortunate circumstances that probably there are there are corrections to these results. We don't know which way they go, but uh, it's uh, uh, it's too early to say that it's a six sigma effect. It's obviously uh, uh, the central value can change, and the sigma is uh, maybe maybe larger. We don't know. So uh, as we are wait, uh, uh, sort of uh, eagerly waiting for the results of this uh, uh, update, we can ask ourselves: Is it is it at all justifiable to have uh, such a large effect. I totally agree that if we violate Lorentz invariance for, for neutrinos at that level, it's probably not going to be good. And so there are, there are some arguments that go about, uh, around it, right? So uh, this is supposed to be epsilon nu. Sorry, I didn't put it <laughs> proper. So this uh, epsilon nu of uh, 10 minus 5, uh, uh, as we know, will lead to the uh, uh, rapid loss of neutrino energy while neutrino going to neutrino plus uh, uh, an electron, electron pair, as we know very well. This is uh, 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 inconsistent with uh, beam and atmospheric neutrinos. Uh, supernova has normal timing for neutrinos and uh, radiative corrections uh, via W neutrino loop to, uh, transmute this epsilon sub nu to epsilon of electrons. Uh, and uh, the, the sensitivity in, uh, through that loop, I mean, the result of that loop should be smaller than 10 minus 15. Uh, so the, the counter proposal that, uh, that you can uh, sort of, uh, the last uh, sort of, for me, uh, uh, hope or last resort would be that, uh, well, maybe uh, you have some weird uh, chameleon-like field that, that likes to live uh, under the ground, underground, or some, some domain wall structure that somehow 
modifies the propagation speed for all species. And that's, uh, I, uh, I uh, sort of entertain this idea, not for the propagation speed, but for the coupling constants uh, with uh, Keith Olive uh, a, few, a few years back. And there were recent suggestions of how maybe this, this might be relevant for, for, the, for this opera problem. So suppose you have a spin two field that somehow condenses in, deep underneath the ground, sort of few kilometers underneath. So, and it has a rather, a rather steep, uh, steep uh, domain profile because otherwise we would uh, detect it with conventional means uh, on the surface. The interesting part of it is that, um, and the effects would have to be like much larger than GR. Uh, and the interesting part of it is that we, uh, physicists spend a lot of money and effort actually to test GR in space. We send rockets and so on, and it's all very holding very well. It's, it's been tested one part in 10 to the five. There are no whatsoever tests done uh, underneath the, gr the ground, right? So you cannot just say, oh, you know, uh, uh, we know that GR works well, so therefore it works well 10 kilometers underground. And remember that the neutrinos pass 10, 10, even 11 kilometers. So uh, that comes back to this uh, uh, <clears throat> idea, what if the old propagation speeds are, are different uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, uh, somehow, I, 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 there isn't, I don't have any good model with, with condensation of spin to field, I should say right away. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, uh, I'm, I'm willing to entertain the idea that it might, uh, might, uh, 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 that such model could be one day constructed. And I looked at it, uh, but maybe we, we are not sure we are going to ever pub publish this paper, but I, at least I can talk about it. Uh, so the, what we did uh, is the, uh, we took the, uh, the uh, theory with, uh, again, scalar QED. This is a scalar QED. Here I have, uh, um, uh, some parameters uh, of this H menu that, uh, that uh, is, is this uh, uh, scalar field, uh, sorry, tensor field that, that condenses that I was talking about. We take a very simple ansatz for it where this epsilon is meant to be 10 minus 5 or larger and it's uh, zero on the, the surface and develops some non-zero value under the ground. So it's not dynamical theory yet because we sort of assume the background. But then we ask the question, uh, what, what uh, if we neglect the, the, the uh, gradients of this epsilon, uh, what, what, what does it, uh, uh, how does the theory look like under, under, underground? Do, uh, so the, the propagation for limiting speed for all particles is changed in, in the same way. And uh, uh, what's interesting that you can actually uh, by uh, sort of uh, show that this is uh, in exactly the same theory a part that the, uh, that the uh, coupling constant is actually now different. And it, here's the, uh, uh, this epsilon, like I mentioned, and there is some free parameter here, delta. So um, uh, you can uh, say, well, um, you, if your coupling constant is different, then you can test it with, uh, this, this uh, varying C theories uh, with, with uh, 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 Tests of clocks, and that's uh, I suppose it's it's not a totally novel idea because uh, uh, Joao in particular uh, did talk about the connection between uh, 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 varying speed of light theories and varying uh, alpha theories. Uh, the the cup uh, this this uh, free parameter here uh, and right and the modification would have been ginormous. This uh, alpha at the level of ten minus five would have been picked by 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 different clocks uh, very easily. So uh, value of delta two equals to three would uh, sort of remove this effect and this delta two equals three um, um, is actually uh, the value that is in exactly in GR. That, that would be the, the coupling of H menu as, a, as it were a graviton. Then you can show that if you, if you choose this delta equals to three then the effect may still appear at the quadratic level and so you have to have your, uh, your uh, and you know, epsilon squared, 10 to minus five squared is 10 to minus 10. Sounds like a small number, but it's still larger than GR, okay? So, 
uh, you have to have a theory that is very nonlinear and indeed replicating all the GR nonlinearities. Then, then you can get rid of the modification of coupling. So, the, the, the proposal is to, um, like this, you, you cannot modify uh, C of neutrinos and not C of electrons or C gammas, then uh, you should avoid, uh, you should expect abnormal uh, modifications of uh, uh, couplings and that is of, uh, of clocks. You, uh, you, if, if you say take two uh, clocks in, in GR uh, whose uh, frequency ratio is fixed and you can bring it everywhere in space uh, and it's, uh, the frequency ratio will, will stay the same, but in this theory will not. And you can uh, test this model without using neutrinos, possibly. And uh, for that, uh, we, we, uh, one could uh, entertain uh, 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 experiments where you would uh, uh, compare uh, uh, well-developed, uh, very precise clocks uh, by uh, lowering them as deep as you can. And uh, uh, in, interestingly, indeed, uh, the, the uh, a neutrino trajectory goes all the way down to 11 kilometers, and the 11 kilometers, this is also the, the depth of the, uh, the, the deepest oceanic trenches that you, that you can uh, actually reach. So if you, if you could uh, do that, you, you should be doing, uh, I mean, at, at, at the remotest budget, you could, uh, you could do the tests of, uh, of uh, GR. To, if, if, you, if you see that GR, say, works with 10% accuracy, that uh, all these uh, uh, suggestions with violation of uh, or modification of the speed of light for all sp particles very much under the ground is probably will, will go away. But this is one of the uh, things that, that could, be, could be done with, uh, with, uh, in the deep oceanic trenches on, or deep boreholes. So nobody tested uh, GR, no, nobody has done any metrology at that depth. Um, Right, so I uh, reached my conclusions. I uh, have uh, given some overview of what is effective field theory. Uh, approach to Lorentz violation is, it's sort of a poor man approach. It doesn't uh, really uh, derive any Lorentz violation from any uh, uh, underlying deep principle. And uh, you can stay at that level and already get some mileage uh, out of uh, uh, using these operators for various uh, interesting uh, 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 phenomenological problems, setting constraints on them, and so on. Uh, but there is a problem, and that's a problem of dimensional transmutation of the higher dimensional operators into lower dimensional operators. You can try to combat this problem by coming up with the more intricate uh, uh, Lorentz violating spurions that just prohibit this. Uh, uh, transmutation, you can add supersymmetry into the game. And uh, what I find very intriguing is that you can have Lorentz violation in the gravity sector at a much lower scale than the GR. By the way, both supersymmetry, because, and that, that proposal require, both require large scale separation. Uh, in supersymmetry, you, uh, you have to have a soft breaking mass much smaller than the, uh, the, the scale at which you, uh, you're uh, Lorentz violation appears, and here in the uh, Horava uh, Lifshitz approach, also you have uh, uh, the, the, the only uh, reasonable, maybe the only pathway of uh, saving the, the, the model from huge constraints is having the Horava Lifshitz scale at much lower scale than, than, uh, than M Planck. And uh, uh, my final speculation uh, was uh, on the um, opera uh, uh, results that I don't know. I mean, I didn't well, not, well, the, <laughs> I didn't know how to explain, but uh, maybe, maybe there is nothing to explain there. But, but uh, at least uh, uh, one when, when test, uh, uh, I mean, motivated by opera, we, we, we can suggest uh, interesting tests of uh, uh, GR uh, deep underground and underwater uh, looking for larger than GR effects that uh, will appear, and not with ne necessarily with neutrinos, but with other species, uh, because that's uh, uh, the absence of large vi uh, violation of Lorentz invariance kind of puts you into the 
uh, game like uh, modifying uh, speed of light for all species under the ground. And that's, I, I'll finish here. for your interest in the seminar. Is there any question? A violation of Lorentz invariance induces a violation of the spin statistics theorem. I'm sure people have looked into this violation of Pauli principles and other things. Uh, could you comment? Um. I'm not aware that uh, necessarily the spin statistics would be violated of Lor uh, out of Lorentz. Sure. Uh, sure. I would be interested to learn. I, I, I don't know about that. I, I know that, for example, the CPT right, uh, relies on uh, spin statistics, Lorentz invariance, and what's the third one? Locality, right? And then. Uh, uh, that 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 much I know, but in my mind they're, they're in a separate compartments. So I would I'd like I'd like to know if if indeed uh, uh, I don't see it that way that uh, that uh, that you I don't I don't think in the theories that I showed I don't think they, um, you can put two fermions in in the same state. It's 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 not there. I mean it's it's the uh, the the int well the. Um, how to put it, the, um, the benefit of the approach that I was uh, pursuing is that it actually uh, uses the same apparatus of field theory, uh, interacting field theory, or everything that we developed. And the, the Lorentz violation is treated as some external physical background, if you like, right? So uh, I don't think it actually leads to the violation of, of, uh, of spin statistics as such. But uh, uh, yes, yeah, so there, there were interesting suggestions of how you can have a fermionic sort of open index condensate that somehow would mix uh, bosons and fermions, but I don't think this, these ideas have been fully developed. That's, that's it. Um, uh, uh, on your uh, um, uh, neutrino last idea, uh, 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 I missed the universality of, uh, of uh, so wh where the universality comes in. Uh, uh -huh. Is so, because um, you're coupling that metric H to, to all species well, automatically? Uh, you see, this, this is uh, uh, minus F mu alpha and mu alpha, and here is uh, basically phi star phi and g mu phi star g nu phi, right? And they, they enter with this specific coefficient that if you calculate the speed of light, for f not the, sorry, not speed of light, by ultimate propagation speed for, for phi and for gamma, they are the same, okay? But even though that this propagation speed is the same, it doesn't mean that the coupling will, uh, is, is the same. That's, that's what, what I'm... So uh, we have this, uh, this background, h mu, that is uh, related to this epsilon, which is a f uh, function of depth. Mm -hmm. To a first order in epsilon, this Lagrangian gives identical propagation speeds for gamma and phi, so it doesn't lead to, the, to this gigantic effects in Lorentz uh, violation. But, you know, if uh, in this adiabatic approximation, when you drop the, 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 the gradients of, of epsilon, you can show that uh, this theory with this modification, but it's just a series of redefinition, is equivalent to your normal QED. Uh, but uh, there is, there is a, a, a possible, uh, uh, for all values uh, of this free parameter, other than three, you have a, a large departure of, of, of the coupling from, uh, from, uh, 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 from what, uh, uh, so the, the coupling constants would be, would be different uh, if you like, on the, on the ground and uh, deep below. But the, 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 the propagation speed remains the same. But this is a toy model with the scalar and the... And the oh, I, can, I can do it with, can with do the with fermion, the... right. So this is, this is just, a, uh, just a matter of principle that, uh, that, you, that you can have it, right? And since, since I don't have a good, good model for this uh, H minute uh, to, uh, condensation to begin with, so I, I could just, uh, just stay at that level at this point. <laughs> 
Okay, see ya. Um, I was surprised to see Victor Flambaum in your list of collaborators. Um, Why? Well, I don't know. Okay, anyway, so w are you trying to use the same mechanism to explain the quasar results, the quasar oh, absorption? Oh, wait, that, that was the original uh, 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 thinking that yeah. I had with Keith, right? That, uh, Olive, that, uh, you know, uh, let's say we have a chameleon or some field that is uh, density dependent, right? And it's uh, frozen to one value uh, in the high density environment, like here, right? And uh, it to a different value in the low density environment, like quasar absorption clouds, right? And you could, you could, you could, you could, you could, you could do that without, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, but why would you see a dipole in the sky? Oh, di oh, God! I mean, uh, no, no. I, I don't. I don't explain dipole, and in particular, I don't think that it's related to BBN in any ways. Or I don't know. It's it's nothing to do with his latest dipole thing. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. <laughs> um, in the supersymmetric solution that you presented, uh, you talk about global supersymmetry. Of That's course, we would like to see it in local supersymmetry. So I saw there was a comment. Could you elaborate that's, on that? Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a good point. But actually, uh, all these, um, with the, maybe with the exception of Harava Lifshitz, where, where people have thought a lot about how the, the gravitational uh, uh, physics looks like and, and so on, uh, or in the theory and the curved space times. Uh, most of this Lorentz violation literature so far has been, okay, here's eight in new background, it, uh, everything is global and so on. I believe it can be supersymmetrized, but the, there is also an issue of uh, uh, new degrees of freedom that are associated with the breaking that you have to be addressing and so on, which hasn't been really done. So in that sense, it's, uh, I don't know how it would uh, pan out, but uh, you know, if, if the, the problem would, not, would not have been solved over eight and be new, then you have no hope, right? So, so you can solve it over eight and be new and then probably move from there. But, uh, um, that's that's all that I can say at this point. You're absolutely right that you have to, you know, go beyond just naive eight and new background. Yes, but that's that's the state of the affairs there. So, okay, we have time for a last uh, question. Yes. Um, you mentioned at some point that corrections coming from Jose Valdez's gravity can uh, affect uh, speeds of light in the matter sector. Uh, you could tune uh, things so that you get rid of the quadratic divergence. Uh, I presume at the one loop level, but do you have any reason to believe that this can be protected, let's say, to all orders? I think so. I mean, the, the, uh, well, uh, okay, let's, let's, let, let, me, let me say that. Uh, let, let's just, before we go into gravity, let's, let me have some, I don't know, toy model with an axion field and with, the, with it's also one over m interaction, right? Also, uh, some in some sense derivative and so on. Then I, I believe it, it's protected to all orders because all loops are, are actually converging. This this these uh, these propagators is uh, uh, well they 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 automatic you you after you it's sort of you you do this integral asymmetrically. You first integrate over all frequencies, right, and then you 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 are left with the d three k integrals, and they're all either convergent, so they they don't they don't diverge. Okay, I haven't checked it to to many loops, but it it, it does it does look uh, like it it will uh, it will persist in in high loop. With Harava, though, uh, there there are some sectors that. Uh, uh, like spin one sector in his theory looks exactly like a spin one in general relativity. So you have to do something to that sector. And so we, we suggested a new operator that you can put in, in the gravity sector. So modify, modify Harava gravity and that, that would at least uh, do, uh, do the trick that the, the, the propagators of these new fields uh, would, would get uh, a Lifshitz behavior. Of the spin one, and then, then, uh, then I think there is a reasonable hope that it will persist to all levels, to all loops. Uh, let's thank uh, our speaker again, and. Uh, <laughs>
and we have a short uh, coffee break now.